I'm Wendy and welcome to my channel. So after a couple of requests um, I'm going to do another abstract blending video. Um, we're going to do a landscape and we're going to use the plastic wrap technique. So here I'm just laying down the colors that I think I want to work with. Um, some yellows, some reds, some browns and siennas and umbers in the bottom. And we're just laying them on loosely and then we're going to start with our plastic wrap while this is still nice and wet and what I'm going to do is leave it on um, this uh, slower speed just at the beginning here so you can see how I the pressure that I use and how much uh, the circles I do, the up and down, the back and forth, just to give you an idea of how I move the plastic on the canvas. And then when we get into the video a little more, because we're doing this quite a bit, I will speed it up. But I'm leaving it here at um, actual speed, just so that you can see um, the technique that I'm using. And there is no right or wrong. As you do it, you'll begin to understand what it feels like beneath your fingers. And, um, you know, the more directions that you do move the plastic in, the better it actually is. So just do what you want. There is absolutely no right or wrong. And at any time during this process, if you lift your plastic and have a look at your colors beneath and the progress that you're making, feel free to spray it with water. I always keep a spray bottle of water handy because that will help tremendously. You want to keep the paint wet on the canvas because you can't work it if it's not wet. If it's dry, you're hooped. So I always keep that bottle of water handy and spray whenever you have to to make sure that those colors will blend into one another. So I think you can see um, how I'm moving the plastic at this point. So I'm going to go ahead here and just speed things up. And you'll see me uh, sometimes when I lift up the plastic, what I do is I fold it in on itself, in other words, wet to wet, so that I can use the opposite side of the plastic um, before throwing it away. There's no point in wasting. Um, I'd like to waste as little as possible. So fold it in, fold it in you know, again, you can fold it one more time and just keep using the plastic. Now this red is quite heavy here, so I'm going to work on it quite a bit just to remove all of that excess and get it blended. And here I'm just going ahead and adding some more cream. I'm not loving the yellow. I don't know what it is. I thought I would really like it blending down into the orange and the red uh, beneath it, but there's something about it that I'm, I'm just not liking and maybe it's the, the type of yellow um, or maybe I'm just not happy in general, but I'm adding a lot more cream to it, uh, keeping it wet with some water and going back in and seeing if I can get it to a point where I'm happy with it. And that's a really important point actually. Um, keep layering. Uh, there's an, as long as you're keeping your painting wet, go ahead and keep layering. Change it as much as you want. Add colors on top until you're really, really happy. As long as you keep the lines between the top color, the middle color, whatever color you've got going on underneath, just keep that line wet at all times and then you'll always be able to blend together whatever it is you're doing. And now there I just added also a bit of um, a pale gray that I had into that cream and yellow mix. I found that uh, just doing the two colors really didn't give me a lot of variation. 
and this is more interesting this is much more interesting and I'm just working at it and working at it and trying to get those colors to blend till I'm really happy with it at this point I think in my mind I'm thinking if I can get rid of 99% of the yellow I'm gonna be happy and here I realize that I've been ignoring the bottom half of the painting as well and there were some marks that I just wanted to take care of so I'm going ahead and blending them um, just to make sure that I can still blend them at this point another spray of water more cream going in with some more cream and the layering don't be afraid of these layers like continuing to go don't think oh it's a failure I've got to keep adding paint I'm not happy it's not working because even if you aren't happy and you have to lay down those extra colors what you've got underneath is all going to benefit whatever you're doing on top because you can see as I take it off you're getting some of that gray some of the original yellow but in a different fashion you're getting also the more I take off you're seeing the base color of the canvas coming through too and that's making the sky very interesting at this point and now I'm just going in with a little more of that rust and I'm trying to make some upward marks with the paint just to get some little bits of variation going on here and there And don't be afraid to use your fingers um, you can get really interesting um, marks and texture using your fingers too but make sure that you wet them first before you go into the paint they're a great blending tool not just brushes not just plastic but your fingers are a great blending tool now I'm just adding a bit of the really darker black brown in there I just want to make sure that my landscape has some interesting um, topical features so that it's not just um, you know one dimensional and I'm quickly seeing that this is becoming another very moody painting um, I think at the beginning when I was using the bright yellow in the oranges I had in mind that I was going to do more of a sunset type uh, type of thing and for whatever reason I wasn't loving the yellow and because I hated the yellow um, it ended up turning into something else and that's okay too. just go with it because art is supposed to be intuitive I think and sometimes the painting will just dictate what it wants to be whether you like it or not and instead of giving up just go for it and embrace it and let it speak to you and just continue on and here you can see me picking up uh, the lighter cream colored paint at the top and then depositing it down a little deeper into the painting um, just uh, to add some more interest and bring that let's call it mist at this point because that's probably what our, where, our, where, it's, where it's headed and I'm just bringing that into the bottom and laying it in on different planes on the, on the surface just to make um, just to make it a little more interesting and something I forgot to mention because we're working on a canvas which virtually has a hollow in the back I do put a book that happens to be about the right depth underneath my canvas so that when I'm doing this padding and rubbing and smearing over the top that I'm not stretching my canvas and poking a hole in it um, so you want something rigid underneath whether it be a stack of papers or a thin book that you have you want to have something in that hollow to allow you to go ahead and be as rough as we are uh, with this plastic wrap on top this is starting to look really good now I'm getting really happy with it and it's just about time to move on to the next steps and because one of the requests that I got was to or was about adding elements to the blended abstract um, once you were finished uh, laying down your terrain so to speak uh, I'm going to go ahead and do those elements here I'm going to add some trees 
I'm using a card just at the outset to get my tree trunk placement um, because for those of you who don't know um, I had a stroke in 2019 and it affected my left side and my shoulder makes my entire body mm, shaky when I try to be very precise so this is just to get me started I, I use the edge of a card in the paint and I make my tree trunks and then I go on from there it, it just helps me out because drawing a straight line freehand is not the best thing for me and we'll just speed up a little bit here to get the rest of these in and you can see by my placement what's happening is I'm inferring that there's terrain there that dips down in the middle uh, perhaps leading to a valley and that's what you want to do you don't want to put your uh, trees all in a line like a little soldier um, what you uh, what you want to do is imply the movement of the land even though we can't specifically see um, because it's so blended we can't other than the highs and the lows of the depths of the paint that we have these putting these trees at specific spots and starting them at specific places will imply the terrain of your picture and drying in between once I have them down I have to dry them before I can move on because I don't want to mess up what's already there and that is a secret to doing the trees and uh, because I go in several times back and forth with three or four different shades um, to do my uh, leaves we'll call them um, what you want to do before your next color will even begin to show that you're highlighting you have to dry in between having a heat gun is awesome because it's very quick very fast and for the amount of paint I have on there it dries pretty much instantly so always dry in between putting on your different colors and I am by no means an expert at painting trees um, my trees are always this scraggly decrepit half there half not there trees in a forest and they work the best for me and I'm just taking a fine paintbrush um, and I'm making squiggles I'm going back and forth and making it uh, some branches on the left maybe not following all the way through to the right some on the right not on the left and just um, down as far as you want to go you don't have to go to the bottom this is not a big fat evergreen in the forest these are tall spindly trees that don't get to see all of the light very often um, and the stalks will be visible on the bottom and uh, I'm just going in and making those squiggly little marks as best I can and then we'll dry in between and go ahead and lay our next color on top and you can go back and forth as many times as you have to till you get the impression that you're looking for and we'll speed up again here And I should just make a note about color. All I'm really doing is, as you can see, the stalks on the left look quite gray compared to the ones that I have on the right. And they're higher up in the mist. And I also want to give the impression that they're farther away. So the more grayed that you make them, the farther away they're going to look. The deeper in color you make them, the closer they're going to look. And that's the idea here. So look at your painting. Um, decide what you want and what trees you want in the background and make those ones as faint as possible they should just kind of barely show through the mist in the background there and then the closer you get in your painting uh, into the foreground then you want to darken that up and I'm just using the exact same colors I used for the sky basically um, a grade down with a little bit of brown in it and just something that matches the background really well and then as we come forward, of course, we're going to use those same colors that we have in the foreground and uh, go back and forth with them. Thank you. 
And I just want to remark here again that this will be a lot of back and forth. Um, at least it is for me. I don't get them perfect on the first try. And um, I do like the idea of a depth of color on them, even though they're tiny and they're not in any huge great detail. Having the differences in varying shades on the branches really make it look a little bit more like a tree. Um, and that's that's what you want. Um, if you're not perfect at painting trees, that's the secret is to is to get enough layers on there with the little squiggles that you can see a lot of definition. You've got the dark coming through, you've got the mid-tone, and then you've got a lighter tone. And you just do it um, based on where the trees are in your painting. You sort of let that be your guide um, as, as to do with the color that they're going to end up being. And as long as they look good in the landscape and you, you're not, your eyes aren't jarred from, from one stark contrast of a color to the next, then, then you're on the right track. And here I thought I'd try to get in a little bit closer so you can maybe have a look at my movements and I'll keep this on actual speed as I do a few of the couple of these trees here, just to give you an idea of what I'm doing with this brush. Um, but it's not the only way you can do it, obviously. Um, you might find a technique and your hand movements are going to be different than mine, and but it's, it's just sort of a, a starting point, um, just to give you an idea of what kind of movements I'm making. And then I'll let you see this for a couple of seconds here, and then I'll go ahead and speed through these um, highlight colors. And I want to make another note because I'm realizing here that I'm not using my most favorite paintbrush for this. Um, this one is just a tad bigger than I normally use. Now I know it probably looks pretty small to you, but the one I prefer to use is actually even smaller. And I find, for me, I find that it works the best. Uh, so the smaller you can go with um, these little marks, the better, I think. Okay, now we're moving along to the end of our painting, um, sort of the last leg of the painting, and we're going to put a few trees in the foreground. And this will help greatly with the depth of your painting. Um, and because I'm not doing an entire tree from top to base, I'm basically just doing the top quarter or the top, uh, you know, third or something like that, it'll give the impression that these trees are on a rise somewhere and we're looking through them, over them, into the valley below. And it'll just help give the perspective into your painting and, and that depth that you really need. And basically the technique is exactly the same. We're using the same squiggles marks that we did before. Just the same way you did the trees previously, that's what we're going to do here. The only difference being our colors and it is visible now so I'm going to talk about it um, I didn't know at the time that I did these front trees not the back ones but just these front ones that 
when I uh, went into my little pots of color and I grabbed some gray, I didn't grab the gray I used before. I grabbed a gray that had some metallic in it. And that caused me no end of grief. Um, I think it does show a little bit here, um, but I really noticed it when I was trying to take a still photograph of this um, after it was finished. And it just shone, depending on how you held the painting in the light, and every time I took a picture of it, it was the metallic was just glaring and it caused me no end of grief so I ended up having to go yeah I think you can see it so I ended up having to go back many many times and just try to recover everything I didn't want these trees to be as heavy or as thick or large as they as I as they ended up being but because I had to keep going over back and forth over them again um, and uh, just trying to get away get all that shine away and then when I mixed after I realized and I mixed some new colors to go over top I also added a bit of matte medium in just to take off that to help aid in taking off that sheen so always be sure of what paint you're dipping into um, if you've got reserves of paint hanging around uh, metallic did not help this painting in any way and I like I said it took a lot of work to sort of recover from doing that And because you've seen me do this technique earlier, I'm going to just speed this up even faster and get through these trees. And again, with the foreground trees, we're just keeping in mind what colors we have right here around us, and we're using them. Um, this is an early morning mist before there's any sun visible, and I'm just trying to keep the trees as an impression of a tree actually on the painting. I don't want it to be uh, like reality. I don't want it to, to stand out. I want to take those same colors that surround it and just make them stand out enough that you know that they're there, but that's it. And while I'm doing this, by the way, I have no idea I'm using metallic. Just the way the painting was and how I was seeing it, um, I could not tell I was using a metallic until it was too late. So you can see it here as I lay it down when it's damp. You can definitely see it. But um, after I'd already finished them and had them done and thought everything was good, and when I took them to do the still, that's when I noticed my mistake. And I had to go back in and, and clean that all up. And here's the dry painting. And I wasn't 100% happy with just the two trees in the foreground, so I did add three little treetop tips over there uh, closer to the left side and I think I'm happy with that now and overall after all the fussing it did turn out to be quite a nice painting so for those who asked uh, I hope this was detail enough for you I hope that you enjoyed um, watching this technique again and I hope you will go on to make your own and if you do I'd love to hear about it please comment down below if you're going to try it Thanks very much for coming by and watching, and we'll see you next time.